Okay. So last meeting, we solved for number three, locate the area of the centroid of the shaded area shown. Now we've already answered that here. We use method one. And as I've said last meeting, today I'm gonna show you method number two. And I've mentioned it before. To get method two, you're gonna consider this whole figure as the total square. Okay. And then just sub subtract the empty spaces. Okay. So let's do that. Let me just let me mute first. Okay. Right. So let me just copy this image. So let's try solving again. Let's do it on another layer. And this is method two. So first, we're going to consider the larger shape that this area can be. And one obvious shape would be a square. Okay. So let that be your area number one. Let me just copy this to make it clear. Okay. Here. A smaller version. So once again, that's your area number one. Next, for your area number two would be the empty spaces. So one of those would be this triangle, right? So let's specify that here. You have a triangle, and that's your area two. Okay. And then we have these two. Smaller right triangles, or we can consider this as one larger right, uh, larger triangle. So let's call that your area three. Here. Okay. Okay. And then let's create equations for each. So area one is just your square. So taking the total dimensions, height is 12 multiplied by base, which is also 12, right? So this is 144. Next, let's take area two. Area two is just a right triangle. So that's one half base times height, one half. This is your base, which is again equal to 12. And then height is just is this. And to get that, look at the left side. This total length is 12. The rest of the length here on the right is 6. So 12 minus 6, therefore, this should be 6 as well. Okay, so this is 6. Computing for that, you get 36, right? 12 times 3, 36. And then lastly, let's get area 3, which is, again, another triangle. And no matter the shape of your triangle, the equation is the same, 1 half base times height. So one half, now the base is this for the green triangle. So that's 12 and height is given, which is six. So therefore this is 36 as well. Next, to get area, total area, before we were adding the composite areas, right? Now take note, the orange and the green areas are empty spaces for the actual shaded area shown, which is just this. So therefore, instead of adding, you're going to take the total area. 
which is your A1, minus the empty spaces, which is your green and orange shaded area. So A1 minus A2 minus A3. Please compute what's the answer here. Correct, Kathleen and I. So Dupra and Joson. Awesome. Very good, it's 74. Please ignore the Discord messages that you're hearing. 72. Okay, so now we have area. Next step, similar to your method one, is to get your X bar and your Y bar. Remember, the equation was AX bar equals summation of AX. So A again is 72. We're looking for X bar. And we'll just create the equations for summation of AX. Let's start with A1. A A1. So the centroid of A1, which is the total rectangle, is at the center of the largest area, which is here. Okay? So we can call this your X1. So again, this is your X1. So that's easy to tell because since this is just a square, centroid of a square is just half of its length or half of its side. Its side is 12, so that's just 6, right? This length is 6. So A1 times 6. Next, similar to what we did with the total area, when we're taking summation of area times distance, and we're going to follow what we did here. So we're going to subtract the empty spaces as well. So subtracting this empty space, so minus A2, and then same step, we're going to locate the centroid of this triangle. It's somewhere here. Okay, so this is your X2. And remember, equation for the centroid of a triangle is one, a one-third base from the higher edge. This is the higher edge if we're looking at this side. Okay, therefore, this is your one-third, so we're going to take two-thirds since we're taking from the lower edge. So two-thirds base. And base is this total length, which is equal to 12. And then minus this green area, which is, again, another empty space. So minus A3, then location of its distance. Okay. Centroid of this triangle is somewhere here. This is symmetrical about the y-axis, so meaning left equals right side. Therefore, this location is just half the base, so that's 6. Let's write x3. I'm going to move these around just so I have space. One and x sub 3 is 6. Okay. Therefore, what's x bar? Okay. Correct, Jade and Angela. Simone, God. So yeah, it's five unit inches. Okay. And then same thing for Y bar. A Y bar, A1 times Y bar. So now Y bar, let's search for that. That's the distance from your X axis. So this is your Y1. Okay. And that's just, what's this? 12, six plus, this length right here. Okay? Now, well, what do you solve again? We're doing this step by step. Once again, 6 plus this length. So 6 plus, and what is this length? Once again, the equation for centroid is one third base. We're taking it from the lower edge. So instead of one third, that's two thirds. So 6 plus two thirds base is this length, which is also equal to 6.
and then A3, so A3 now, A2, minus A2, oh, sorry, this is for the triangle, sorry, A1 is for the rectangle, which is also equal, equal to 6. This is your Y1. Just just six. I was talking about for the area two. So minus area two. Once again, that's six. This is your y two. Six plus two thirds. Six. And then lastly, minus a three which is this green one, and this is its y bar. Oh, sorry, y sub three. Once again, centroid of a triangle is one third base. Even though this is a regular triangle, not a right triangle, distances apply. So one third base from the higher edge. So looking at here, at the direction of our measurement, higher edge is from here. So therefore, it's one third. We're using a one third. A one third base, this is your base, which is six. So one third times six. If we solve what's y bar. <laughs> Correct, Jade and Kathleen. So it's six, correct? Y bar. Six inches. And let's compare it to our previous answer. It's the same, five inches and six inches. Okay. So there. So as you can see, two methods should get the same answer. So it depends on what's more convenient for the question. You can either divide it into your common shapes or take it as a larger shape than subtract by the empty spaces, okay? So do you understand number three, method two? Please answer in the chat. Okay, good. So that means we can move on to number four. So number four, find the coordinates of the centroid of the shaded area shown. Once again, it's coordinates. So we're looking for your x, y. So let's start. So here, okay. For this type of question, you don't have a choice but to take it as a whole shape and then subtract by the empty spaces. Why? If we try to divide this into simpler shapes, we get something like this, which is not a regular shape. Okay? So that's why you can do that. We're going to do your method to subtracting the empty spaces. Okay, so let's begin. Your area one should be the largest shape, okay? Considering the empty spaces as well. So that means. So taking this, and as you can see, the larger shape is just a rectangle. So that's your area one. Okay, so it's a rectangle, so base times height. Basis, this is 12, this length. Next, I have to get this length. What is that equal to? Well, if you look correct, Carla, it's six. So I'll give you the point. Six. So how do I became six? Because if you see here, this length is equal to this length. And that's actually the radius of this portion of a circle or quarter circle. And the radius is given to be 6. So therefore, this is 6 and this is also 6. Okay? So that's 12 plus 6, which is just 18. I'm sorry, 12 times. Yeah, 12 times 6, uh, 12 plus 6 times height, 
height is given, this total height is 12. If compute, what's the area one? Correct. Jermaine and John. So, what is for? Yes, it's 216. Next, area 2. So now you're going to decide what empty space you want to start with next. Let's say this. Okay, this is your area 2. Okay, and then let's choose this as your area 3. Okay, let's make it smaller. Area 2, area 3, area 4. Okay, area 2 is this semicircle. So equation for a semicircle is 1 half area so one half pi r squared or pi r squared over two so pi r squared r is four as you can see so four squared over two that's 16 pi over two which simplifies to a pi correct yeah it's a pi so again, I like writing a pi so just, uh, because I don't want to store this in my calculator. I can just type in a pi. Next, area three. This is a quarter circle. So that's one fourth pi r squared. So pi r squared, again, given your radius, that's six, six squared over four. So what is this equal to in using pi? Using pi. Correct, Gary, Angela, and the Leon. So it's nine pi. Gary, the Leon. Yes, nine pi. And then lastly, you have this right triangle. So that's your A4, which is just, again, one half base times height. So one half base is this, which we established to be six. Height is this. So how do we get that? Well, recall this total length is 12. So 12 subtracted by this length, which is, again, the radius of your quarter so circle, which is six. So 12 minus six is also six. So one half six times six is eighteen. Yes, it is eighteen. All right. And now, like we did earlier, to get the area, area is area one, the total shape minus empty spaces. So that's your area two minus area three minus area four. And what is that equal to? Correct, Andre and Nicole, De La Vega and Torres. Torres. Okay. 144.59. And once again, whenever you get something like this, ideally you want to store that in your calculator. All right, so now we have area, so we'll just use our basic equation for centroid AX bar equals summation of AX. So AX bar, once again, this is your A. X bar is what we're looking for. So let's start with A1. So A1, once again, is your rectangle. So can anybody give me the X for your rectangle? Very good, it's nine. So Carla and I. Ivy and then Carla. Okay. So nine. Why? Because this total length is established to be 18, so half of that is 9.
and then sorry about that minus a2 which is again this well, what's the x of a2 very good it's four so correct Gian and John. So obre for that. Okay, so how why is it four? So remember this is your x2, right? Which is just the radius of your semicircle, which was four. That's why this is four. And then minus a3. Okay, so we have this. This is your a3. So to get your x distance, centroid of a quarter circle is somewhere here. So this is now your x3. So I'm not gonna ask, I'm gonna show you. Okay, so for a3, that is, let's start here on the left. So that's four plus four, since radius plus radius. So that's eight plus four, that's 12, then plus whatever this distance is. However, Look at the equation given to us, okay, if we do it that way. Yeah. Well, we're dealing with a quarter circle, so which, which is here. Okay. The distances given to us are from the straight edges. Okay, that's your x bar and y bar, which is the same for a quarter circle. So once again, they're given from the straight edge. So that means in relation to this problem, okay, this is what's given in the equation okay, from the straight edge. So what are we going to do? Well, instead of doing it 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus whatever this length is, we're going to consider the total length, which is 18 minus the equation. Okay? So 18 minus, and the equation was 4r over 3 pi. Okay? So 4, radius of this quarter circle is 6 over 3 pi. So that's how you do it when measurements aren't convenient. And then lastly, minus A4 multiplied by this X1, X sub 4 rather, which is this length. So we've already dealt with triangles. We should know by now this is just 12 plus. We're taking this from the lower edge. So this length is 2 thirds base. So plus two thirds and base is six inches. Okay. So from this we solve what's x bar. Okay, correct. Adrian and Gia. Ah, oh, sorry. Gian Malika no decimal. Adrian and John. So Rivera and Kenya. Okay. So seven point seventy four. Okay, remember this is minus, okay? And then unit inches. They were not done, we're looking for coordinates. So now we need to move on to your y bar. So next, a y bar equals summation of a y. So a once again is just this y bar. If we're looking for, we're starting again with a1. Okay. A1 is just this length. Oh, let's read a different form. This is your a1 is your rectangle. X1 is this length which is just half the height, which is also equal to six. Next, x2. Okay, let's solve for x2. So this is your quarters uh, semicircle. This is the centroid of your semicircle. And this is your x2. A uh, y2 rather, y2. How do we get that? Recall, this length is again from the curved edge. The equation that we're given is from the straight edge, so from here. So instead of doing it this length by this length plus this length, we're gonna do total length minus 
the equation for this distance. So that's 12. So minus A2 times 12 minus again here, which is, if we remember correctly, it's 4R over 3 pi. Yep, it's 4R over 3 pi. So 4, R again is 4 over 3 pi. Okay, now let's move on to area 3, which is this. So locating Y3, this is your Y3. Okay, so once again, we're taking the length from the curved edge. So in order to avoid that, let's just take the total height here, 12 minus this, which is in our equation, again, for R over 3 pi. So A3 times total height is 12 minus 4R, R is 6 over 3 pi. Okay. And then lastly, your A4. This is your Y4. And this length is just taken from the higher edge. So we're gonna use one third base. Considering this is our base for this direction of measurement. Okay, so our base now is equal to six. So one third times six. Okay, please compute what is our Y bar. Okay, if you used the stored value, you should get 5.07, not 5.08. So I'm going to give it to those who solved 5.07. So John, Kenya, and Angela. So Gary, they, Kenya. Two. Gary, get three. And then the first one who solved. That's Skylar and then Gian. So for math, math. Okay. All right. So once again, the answer was 5.07. And then finally, our final answer is 7.74 for x coordinate and 5.07 for y coordinate. Okay, that's our number four. Do you have any questions for number four? Please answer in the chat. How about the others? Please answer. Do you have any questions? Okay, so now let's answer something a bit different from what we've been doing. Number five. So number five, beam has the cross section shown in the figure. Compute the moment of area of the shaded portion about the horizontal centroidal axis X sub O of the entire section. So note, in strength of materials, the result of this is used in computing for maximum shear stress. So this is in preparation for your higher mechanics for those who will be taking it. So basically remember, Moment of area is something we discussed previously, which was just area multiplied by distance, okay? The reason why it's called moment of area is because remember for moment, 
a definition of that is just force times distance. Here, we're replacing force with area. So area times distance, hence moment of area. So that's what we're looking for. And we're taking it about this centroidal axis, x sub o, which is given here. And x sub o is just the x-coordinate of your centroid. Okay? So to take moment of area, we're going to take this area and multiply it, or multiply the centroid of that shaded region by its distance to this axis. Okay? So first step of this problem is to figure out what is or where is this axis located. So we're go our goal is looking for x sub o, or x bar in our case. So let's solve. Once again, we're solving for x bar first, and then we'll solve for moment of area. All right, so x bar. So same thing, same thing as we've done earlier. First step is to get your areas or your composite area. So we have one, two, three triangles or sorry rectangles or depends on you how you want to cut it you can cut it this way one long triangle and then one two three four shorter sorry, rectangles or the more common way to analyze this is taking the top portion the bottom portion and the middle portion okay so that's three rectangles so let's call this your area one this is your area two, and then this is your area three. Okay. So let me just separate them by color so it's easier to see. So that's area one. So area two. This is area one. And then lastly. Just so you know how everything was divided. Okay, let's start area one. Okay, so it's just this, which is space times height. So that's given six times height one. So that's six. Next area two, which is this thinner one. So height is 12. Base is given to be one inch. Okay. So 12. For base times height, so one again, this is your base and height 12. So this is just 12. By the way, someone's mic is on, please check your mic. Thank you. And then lastly, area three. Okay, here. Once again, base given 12, height is given to be one. So that's 12. So solving for total area, that's just 30. Right? So 12 plus 12 plus 6. So 13. Now that I have that, I need to solve for your x bar and y bar. Now, to make things easier, okay, recall, this is what we're looking for, this axis right here. Okay? And then to get that axis, I either solve for x bar or y bar. Because again, this axis is located at the centroid. So let's say the centroid is this point. So it's already shown here in the figure, but the only dimension or value that I need is actually y bar. Why? Because let's take this as our x-axis, okay? And then let's take this as our y-axis, okay? So since I want to know where this lies, I'm for sure knowing it's somewhere here at the line of symmetry. Because remember, your centroid is at the line of symmetry, which is your y-axis. Remember, if an axis is not given in the problem, you're going to create it. Okay, And make sure, usually, you're going to put your axis on the line of symmetry so that either your x-bar or y-bar is 0. For example, here, there's no given axis, so I placed it here. So y-bar, I placed it on the line of symmetry because now I know x-bar is just 0. So now the problem is, all I need to know is y bar, because that is that will tell me where this line is in reference to this base. Okay, so in short, let's solve for y bar. So a y bar. Same equation, summation of a y. Okay. So a y bar a is 30. We're looking for y bar. Let's start with a1. So a1. This is your x1. 
Oh, sorry, your y1, your other. Okay. So from the center of this to the base, this is your y1. So looking here, this is 1 plus 13, right, since this is 12. And then half of this height is 0.5. 1 over 2, 1 half, 0.5. So therefore, this y1 is just equal to 13.5. Okay, yes, correct, Andre, 13.5. Next, plus A2. Can anybody give me where is Y2 for A2? Correct. Carla and Roby. Para and Pulses. Ibara, naka 2 points ka na. So, let's give it to the next. Jade, naka 2 points ka na din. I think. Let's see. So, let's give it to Samantha. Okay. So, it's 7. So, why? Let's again. Centroid of this green bar is at half the height, so it's at 6. So it's somewhere here. So 6 plus for length 1, that's 7. So 6 plus 1. And then plus, lastly, this bar. Well, what's the location of Y3 for the blue bar? Correct, it's 0.5. Okay, so let me just note this out. So y2, and then this is just this very small portion is your y3. And yes, it's 0.5. Because half the height, our height is 1, that's 0.5. So correct, Andre and Jermaine. De La Vega. So border. And then who else? Carla. Okay, Obre. I think you already two as well. So Samantha. Okay. Well, it's 0 0.5. So A3 times 0 0.5. Please solve what's Y bar. Correct, it's 5.7. So correct, John. Relor. Ang dami pala natin, John, dito. And then next... Gian correct, Jade correct, Angela correct. I think you all have two points already. Okay, and then oh, let's give it to Vivian. Okay, so it's 5.7. So now what's the purpose of knowing this? Now we're actually getting your moment of area. Which is just area multiplied by this sends to your centroid, okay? So now let's divide this. So we were given yeah, this to be our shaded region. So that's what we're concerned with, okay? So let me just copy that. So we have this. So again, this is what we're concerned with. And then this is your y sub. So to get moment of area, you're gonna take area about or above or below your shaded region. Here it is specified to be above, as you can see in the problem. We're shading above. So take the area above. So if it's something like this where it's not a regular shape, you're gonna do the same thing as locating your central. You're gonna divide it into regular shape. So this is your 1, this is your 2. So area 1 uh, is the same, it's still 6, right? So area 1 is just base times height, 6 times 1. Then multiply the centroid of that to its distance from the axis. So this is 5.7, okay? So now, to get the location, so this is 6 times 1 times, so the location is, looking here, total length of everything is 14, so 14 minus this length. Okay. 
So, 14 minus y bar. And not only that, okay, this is what we're taking. Remember, okay, centroid of that to this. So, we're going to subtract height of the or half the height of your bar, which is again 1. So, we're sub subtracting 0.5. So to write that in our equation, that is total height 14, right? This is your total height, 14 minus y sub o, okay, or y bar, okay, so it's y bar, and then minus this length as well, which is 0.5, okay, to get this length. So let's, let's call that your y1 again. And then do the same thing for the other area. So plus this area. So base of that is still 1. Now let's figure out the height. Okay. This total height is 12. This is 5.7. So now we, oh, sorry, this is 5.7. So now we have to know how high do we have left. So to get that, okay. So let's look here at our original drawing. Again, this height now is what I want to find out. So let's see, 12 plus 1, that's 13. So that's this total length. So 13, then subtracting it by your y bar, that's how I get this. So 13 minus y bar. Okay, do you follow? Yeah. 13 minus y bar. So once again, total length 13 minus y bar. And then, we're not done. Centroid of this area is somewhere here. And now the goal is to get this. Okay. So 13 minus y bar, that's already this length. Distance from the distance of the centroid of that to the axis is just height divided by 2. And once again, this is the height. So I can just multiply this by 13 minus y bar over 2. And then from this, I can solve for a moment of area. So please compute what's the answer, considering y bar is 5.7. Correct, Carlo and Pulses, John, so the lore and Pulses. Okay, so 73.45. Okay, based on some of your answers, seems like some of you are or know where I took my questions from and are just copying the answers from that, which is fine. But I hope you can solve this on your own as well. So correct it's 73.45 to be more specific. And then unit, moment of area. area. Moment of area is just area multiplied by distance. Our area is inch squared. Distance is also in inches, so final answer in inch cube. Inch squared times inch is just inch cube, okay? So that's your moment of area, which again, you'll use this or the concept of this in your higher mechanics, specifically computing for maximum shear stress. So that's number five. Do you have any questions for number five? Please answer in the chat. How about the on? Uh, how about the others? Please answer as well. Do you have any questions?
my knee po bang set up sa calcul for this? Wala. You can just solve this normally. This doesn't have to be in radius or degrees or anything. Bakit iba? Specifically, what uh, what number? Iba sagot niya. Para ma-double check natin. Maka ako lang yung mali nang na-type or nasulat. Paano nakuha yung 13.5? Saan? One seventy one to mabas dito. Oh, okay. Asa na ko yung thirteen point five. But it's twelve plus one plus half of this height. So that's your y one. So thirteen plus point five. So thirteen point five. That's how thirteen point five was done. Let me just recompute this. Kung bakit one seventy one to malabas. Sa iba. So six times thirteen point five plus twelve times seven plus twelve times point five over thirty. Five point seven is more Ah, you forgot to divide by your total area, which is thirty. So 171 divided by 30, that's your 5.7. Yeah, okay na? All right. Okay. You're welcome. Any other concerns? Okay na? All right. So that ends our topic for centroid. Okay. So later, you'll have your quiz, okay, when I dismiss you. But before that, Announcement. On Tuesday, you'll have your quiz number three for module three. Coverage is this centroid. And then on Thursday next week, lecture. Okay. So once again, you'll have your seat work after this. Once I dismiss you, check your blackboard. It should be there. Don't forget to upload your solutions. Deadline for your seat work is today, 11.59 p.m. Soft deadline. Hard deadline is after one week. Okay. So do you have any questions? Great. No more concerns. I'm going to stop the recording here.